In my last video, I talked about energy and the importance of energy. Today, I want to talk about relaxing. Some people commented that they have trouble generating enough energy. They very quickly feel tired and so they aren't able to continue with their language learning. So I think it's important to recognize that we are all different and I have my experience. I like learning languages. I've learned a lot to varying degrees and I share with you my experience, but I fully recognize that other people have uh, different makeups and have different interests. However, I will continue to share with you my thoughts. I think it's important that we vary intensity and relaxation. We need both. We very much need intensity. I have found that if I'm going at a language, I want to have a certain amount of intensity. This will vary. When I was learning Chinese back in 1968, that was my job. As a Canadian diplomat, I was paid to learn Chinese. So I went at it full time, three hours a day with a teacher one-on-one, -on -one. then I would go home and I would practice, you know, learning characters or I would listen to things on my big open reel tape recorder and I was at it five, six hours a day. Intense. And yet still, I would vary my activities and I would also find time to be with friends, find time to play tennis. I was never running out of gas. I was never burned out from my efforts at learning Chinese, but I was going at it quite intensively. That's the most intensely I have ever studied a language. Now I learn languages for fun. So I might go an hour, an hour or so a day on my iPad using Link, looking up words or listening to things. But the important thing is, in my view, that when I find that, say, I've been doing something on the iPad and I feel, you know, I'm tired now. I've been doing this for half an hour, for an hour, for an hour and a half. Stop. Okay. And it's perfectly legitimate to stop. You shouldn't push yourself beyond the point where you're starting to feel that it's a chore. It shouldn't be a chore. And what makes it not a chore is if you do activities that you enjoy doing and that you vary these activities. So right now in Arabic, I'm listening to uh, interviews in Arabic. In particular, I'm going through an interview with Carlos Rosen, who was the Lebanese, Brazilian, French president of Nissan in Japan, amongst other things in his career. And it's a very interesting story and he's a fascinating person to listen to in four languages. And of course on YouTube, I can find his interviews in different languages and the Arabic ones, I bring them in and I study them on link, but I do them, I enjoy them. And to me, the important thing is that I am active. Now, another aspect of relaxation, and I liken sort of language learning to long distance running. If I'm going to go for a jog for half an hour, uh, through the forest, I'm not going to sprint because I've got to make it all the way back and I intend to enjoy the run through the forest. That's not to say that it may not be a good thing at times to sprint a little bit. You know, you have this fart leg run, a uh, little bit of aerobic and then anaerobic activity, but basically I have to pace myself. Another thing about pacing yourself is that you have to have good sleeping habits. Again, easily said, there are some people who have trouble sleeping. I don't know. I certainly never sleep through the night, but uh, sleep is where we kind of consolidate the things that we've been learning. So I sometimes hear people say, well, you know, I'm going to put my Spanish or Chinese on and fall asleep listening to it. And uh, that way I'll learn it uh, while sleeping. All you do is ruin your sleep. I will leave a link to an article from uh, a website called News in Health. And it explains just how important sleep is to consolidate what you have learned, to consolidate the memories, how the brain continues to hang on to the things that you have learned during the day. So sleep is important. Another thing that I think is relevant to this discussion of, you know, intensity and then relaxation is that I have always found that if I leave a language for a while, and particularly if I study another language, then when I come back to the first language, I'm often better than I was. I've called this sort of benign neglect, and I'm not sure whether the language continues to gestate in your brain or whether it's because you tried this other language and struggled with that for a while, then you come back to the first one and the first one seems easier. But I have always found that, that there is no loss in leaving a language for a while, other than the fact that you're not spending that time with the language. So you will perhaps progress more slowly by not having spent the time with the language. However, you won't slip very much. And so I often hear people say that they're afraid to stop working on this language because they're actually interested in this other language and then they'll lose the first language. I've never found that to be the case. I think we can vary 
intensity with periods of benign neglect where we don't do anything and we don't suffer that much. And if we come back refreshed, then so much the better. And now it's important to remember that when we're studying, we shouldn't be too fussed. And I mentioned this in the last video about energy. We shouldn't be too fussed about how much we're learning. Like I've got to learn this and I have to go through all these flashcards and I have to do this and that. All of that pressure is, is sort of counterproductive. You have to have the confidence and the trust that your brain is learning, that as long as you are active, that you will learn. People sometimes ask me, oh, Steve, you have this number, so many known words, 20,000 known words. Do you really know those words? Can you produce those words? And I say, well, probably not. However, it reflects the fact that when I see that word on a text in link, I don't save it because I understand it in that context. Eventually, I will be able to use it, but no guarantees. However, those statistics, known words, number of links created on link, hours of listening even, all of those are measures of your activity. Because the most important thing is that you stay with the tax task and remain active. Don't put pressure on yourself. Don't force yourself to do activities that you don't like to do. Don't do things that are likely to make you run out of energy. Vary the activities, vary studying hard with relaxation. By all means, find someone, if you can find someone to talk to in the language and that it, if it's a low stress environment, that's all good. So I think we don't all have the same level of energy. We should all be mixing in periods of relaxation. We shouldn't be afraid either to relax or to study another language. We should apply the level of energy that we have and do things that either require less energy or give us a sense of energy. And part of that is to give yourself credit for what you're doing. And mainly that means give yourself credit for being active, remaining active in learning the language. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.